Now we're going to demo actually creating two pages, one with inline code and one with code behind. These are this is what they're referring to is the actual server code that's going to process prior to the page being delivered to the web browser. So the first thing we're going to do is give an example of a code behind page and then we'll give an example of an inline code. In most cases you would always choose the code behind pages for two primary reasons. Number one, the page is compiled, the code behind page that is, and therefore executes faster. Secondary to that, it separates the client side code to the server side code, separating it by file, making it easier to follow along in the logic of the pages. So we'll go ahead and right click and select add new item. And what we want to do is go ahead and create a visual C sharp template app. And we're going to rename it, call it code behind.aspx. Now how you designate whether the code is going to be in a code behind page or in line is simply this checkbox place code in a separate file. By removing that checkbox, it actually creates an inline code page. So let's go ahead and make sure we leave that selected and select add. Now you actually see our code behind.aspx page has been added to the solution. I'm going to go ahead and go to our design view. I'm going to go ahead and go to my toolbox and I'm going to go ahead and pin this so that I can see it for future pages as well. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, two pieces of code. First, actually the only one I really need to add is a label. Let's go ahead and drag and drop a label from our toolbox and drop it into our view. Next what we're going to do is go to the code behind page. Very simply to get to the code behind page you can double click anywhere on this page. It will automatically create your page load event which is executed every single time this page is called from a web, by a web browser. The server actually executes this code and returns a result back to the web browser or actually to a web page that is then delivered to the web browser. What we're going to want to do in this page is go ahead and change the text that exists in our label. So we're going to go label one dot text and make it equal to hello world. Okay. Now again, this is a page that's behind the code behind the ASPX page. And you actually see that the file name is different here. And you can flip between those two pages. Now I want you to go to the code behind.aspx page and go back to your source view and notice that this is the client side code with the exception of anything you see within these server tags up here. And this is the code behind page. Again, this is a method that runs every time the page is called by a web browser. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate this. Again, I'm going to go ahead and click on the green arrow. It will give me a warning letting me know that my web config is not yet enabled for debugging. It's fine. Select OK. And my label then shows hello world. You can actually view the source from within your web browser and you can actually see how the server output hello world when it executed the code behind page. Okay, let's do the same thing, but do inline code. So I'm going to go ahead and close these two pages. Go over to the root of my project, right click, select add new item. Again, Visual C Sharp, web form. We're going to rename it to inline.aspx and we're going to remove this checkbox. This is important because this is what's going to tell it to put the code in line. Select add. Again, we'll see inline.aspx is our page that's being displayed. I'm going to go to my design view by clicking on my design. Go find a label in my toolbox. Again, left click and drag and drop into the body of my inline.aspx page. 
do the same thing, double click anywhere in the free space of my page. And you'll actually see now that the event page underscore load actually exists within the ASPX page itself. It's no longer a separate .cs page. So we're going to do the same thing within our page load event. Just type label 1.txt equal to hello world. Go ahead and again run it. And you'll see we end up with the same result where the server has actually sent hello world as HTML to the client. Now because I've created two files inside of my project or inside of my ASP.NET site, uh, these are actually demo files, so I want to create another folder. Right click, add new folder within the root of my solution, and let's just call it demo. And then what we'll do is we'll take these two files and we'll drag them by left clicking and dropping them into the demo folder. Now when I grab the code behind that ASPX page, it automatically carries the code behind for this code behind that ASPX page with it and drops it into that demo folder. As you can see, there's the associated code behind folder for code behind ASPX.